Hello there. So you've gone and set up your nice vintage computer experience area. You have your Model M keyboard, your beige mouse, your printer, your technically period correct monitor, and it's all working and you're happy. And you decide you wanna help complete the experience by adding a phone, but the phone's kind of useless. It's 2022 now as I'm releasing this video, you have a cell phone. You don't have a phone line in your house, so that thing is pretty much useless. So it just sits there and does nothing. Or does it? This is synthesized speech sent to a phone directly from a computer. As you just heard from the phone, that was a synthesized voice being sent from my laptop just off screen through a system to a phone for me to hear the message, which is just a lot of fun and was kind of a pain to figure out, but not actually that hard to do once you know how. So I had the idea to set this up at the end of one of my streams when I looked down at a phone and realized, what if I could have viewers call me through messages on Twitch while I'm streaming and have the phone ring and read it to me? And I couldn't get the idea out of my head. So I had to figure out how to do it. So today I'm gonna show you how I did it. And I'm also going to be spending some more time at the end of this video finishing up the Twitch API integration to make that viewer reward possible. But the main part of today's video is going to be showing you how I did this, giving you the software and configuration files that I created to make this work, and just having a bit of fun here because I've got a phone working in my office now, kind of. Okay, let's just cut right to the quick of how I'm doing this. On my right, I have a laptop running Linux. You could do this with a Raspberry Pi or four just slightly different path running Windows with some different programs. Then I have a standard phone. There is nothing weird about this Panasonic Isa phone that I'm using here. It is completely unmodified. The real magic comes into play with this box. This is a Cisco SPA 112. It takes in ethernet and has two phone lines that are going out. And that does actually mean that I could take an additional phone here, connect it, and then have two of them and they can actually dial each other as well. This is me talking through the phone. So there's a lot of interesting stuff you can do with this. Now the dialing one phone to the other is actually all handled by this box. This thing is kind of magic and you can get one of these for 30 to $50, depending on condition on eBay. This was a, uh, a $30 example <laughs> and they work kind of easily uh, using protocols that I'm not familiar with. Now, the way I wanted to set all this up was not the traditional way that people who mess around with old phone equipment do. I'm not running a PBX, I'm not hosting anything long term, and there isn't any server software of any kind running on the laptop. This thing does one job, starts it, completes it, and then closes, and there's nothing left running, which is how I wanted this setup to work. So let's actually go through that and uh, talk about some of the complications of setting that up. Now, I wasn't kidding, uh, these things aren't that expensive. The one I have from Cisco is a higher end one that has some better capabilities specifically because I wanted to be able to fax through it. But if you look for a phone ATA with SIP on eBay, you'll find a lot of these that will probably work for this for fairly cheap. Now, I don't know which ones will work completely for a solution like this, but I think that a lot of them probably will because this is not very complicated. Now let's go over what you have to do to set this up. So the Cisco box has a login that you need to get into, and then we can configure some things. So the quick setup here has something that you'll want to uh, change here. Um, we can get to these things quite easily, but we also have some stuff underneath of the voice here that is uh, more complicated. Now I followed this guide, which I will link in the description below based on uh, advice from some people when I was streaming this. And this one happened to be specifically for my uh, ATA adapter. So that was why I went with that one, but there are some general things that you just need to keep a lookout for. So you're gonna have to configure your line and 
what you need to pay attention to is whether or not your SIP protocol is using UDP or TCP because different programs support different versions and it depends on which one you're using uh, for this. Now, this is just the exact same internet type stuff. TCP has acknowledgements, UDP is just write only. Uh, you'll need to pay attention to the port that you're using. I think 5060 is the standard port, so that one's not too complicated. I'm not sure exactly what all settings are going to be required for every single system. Uh, but one thing you're going to need to set is a user ID here, and this can be kind of any number. There, I don't know exactly what the limitations are, but you do need to make sure that you know that. And then the other thing you need to know is what the IP address of this thing is. Now I had to reset the box and uh, change it over to DHCP to get it connected to my stupid T-Mobile router I have at the office, but it's uh, pretty easy to do. Now I'll show you how I got the IP address out of this thing, um, and it's oddly through the phone. Uh, I couldn't get it to show up on Nmap initially because apparently the SIP protocol isn't one of the default things and I, it, it's possible to figure it out. I just don't have a ton of experience with it. This is actually easier uh, using the phone. So I'm gonna take this off the hook, switch it over to speaker. And configuration. you can log into the configuration menu on the Cisco one by pressing star four times. Then it's going to tell you to you're in the configuration menu and how to access things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to punch in the code to read the IP address for this thing. Now that code on here was 110 pound. So that was actually a uh, really easy to get to once you know how to do it. Uh, you're gonna wanna look up the manual for yours uh, if you go and get one uh, because it's definitely useful. There was another configuration menu, I think it was 100, allows you to enable or disable DHCP and you might even be able to configure a static IP address for this thing through the phone. Uh, there's a surprising amount of configuration that you can do this way. So it's definitely worth looking into. But then the other thing is down here is the dial plan. Now, I don't think you need to mess with this if you don't care about having the phones be able to call each other if you have two of them connected to the same box. But here is the number that you would dial for the phone. This would be the user ID for the line on the SPA device. And I think this is the IP address and the port that it will try to contact for this user ID. So it might actually be possible to easily set up multiple of these on the same network using that if you want to have some kind of DHCP direct phone calling system in an office, I suppose. I don't really want that. Um, again, my whole thing is just text to speech through the phone. So I'm not trying to set up anything more complicated than just being able to contact the phone. Which brings me to how I am doing all of this. So I am actually using a program called SIP P to run uh, the connection to the phone. Now, you can run SIP P directly, and then it will tell you a bunch of different options and give you some different command line parameters that you can then learn how to run. This is all kind of ridiculously complicated and a huge pain. This is the documentation for SIP P and uh, like that it was last updated in 2014, because one thing you'll find is that almost all of the phone software out there is extremely archaic and very old and really not user friendly at all. They kind of assume you're coming into this with a background on how to set these things up. And I have not found many good tutorials on doing this at all. I don't know if this is because everyone who does phone stuff usually has some kind of certification on how to do it, or just that it's old and no one maintains it, or perhaps even it's intentionally done because honestly, the stuff that I'm setting up here is just a stone's throw from being able to do robocalling. So I'm not quite sure what it is, but uh, as you scroll through the documentation for SIP P here, uh, you get to the really interesting part for what I want to do, which is right here, media RTP commands. So with SIP P, you are able to stream a WAV file to the phone over a SIP connection. 
Now, this is a lot easier said than done with SIP because it's actually designed for load testing a phone system. And if you run one of its default profile type things, uh, you can do something like this. And what it's going to try and do is contact a host. Now, uh, let me just remember how you actually set up a host. Uh, oh, you just give it an IP address, okay. So let's say we're gonna do this, 192.1. 68.12.158 and it's just going to kind of barrage the phone over there. Um, eventually it'll probably stumble on the user ID for the phone, but this is really more testing the phone exchange hardware. I can see the network access LED going nuts over there now, but uh, that's what it's for. So it doesn't really do a whole lot. However, they added these features for playing audio over it. I'm not quite sure why, since this is a load tester, but that means that you can actually send audio. Now, you have to do this by having it output an XML file that you can then open and modify. So uh, I have done this already. So this is an example file that the program uses, and I've added this line, which will play this file when it's connected. Now, that is just how you play audio over the phone. Creating text-to-speech is a different thing. Now, actually doing text-to-speech turns out to not be all that difficult. There is a package in the Ubuntu repositories called Festival, and that allows you to very easily do text-to-speech. So I've uh, set that up, and it will just read like arbitrary lengths of text, which is kind of cool. But the biggest problem, and this seems to be the case with all of these phone programs, is that every single one of them is completely incapable of transcoding on the fly or just playing back non-standard audio files, I guess. Um, every single one of these programs that I've encountered must use 8,000 kilohertz, 16-bit, ALA or ULA encoded audio files in a wave container. Ugh, this is not easy to deal with. <laughs> and it's quite annoying to set up. So what I did is I ended up creating an FFmpeg command to actually convert this, and that is right here. Even though FFmpeg is really good usually, this still has problems for me, so uh, I kind of have to work around some things. Like, one of the things that I wanted this program to be able to do is loop the text-to-speech uh, three times. That way, in case I miss something the first time, uh, it'll play again automatically before it hangs up. But because uh, the formatting for this file type uh, for the audio wave is weird, I couldn't just like create a silence uh, wave file. Like if I open this wave file in Audacity here, uh, you'll see that it's just silence um, and there's nothing going on. But when I try to include that file into the wave um, by building up one with Concat in FFmpeg, then it just fails. So I, I don't know what's going on. So what I actually ended up doing was creating a pause uh, short wave right here. And I did this by using festival to pronounce a space period line. And for festivals kind of set up in a way where it's able to do uh, this formatting a little better for some reason. I'm not quite sure why, but it works. So I was able to get the wave file from festival and then my extremely horrible solution here is just to repeat the extremely short pause from festival many, many, many times uh, to add a pause between the loops. It's very hacky, but it works. So, you know, <laughs> that's it. But uh, yeah, so what I can do is uh, we can create a TTS line. So here is the command that I ran to create that TTS line. And I'm gonna go ahead and change this from loop once, which is just a single loop uh, concat file to loop normal, which will play it three times. And we'll set this to something else. So I'm just gonna pick this at random. Uh, as I'm doing this, I can see in the upper right, it is 9.47 a.m. So I'll just do the time is 9.47 a.m m and i'm not quite sure how this will work uh because i don't know how it pronounces things like that but uh, i can do that and then run my call script and the call script just has everything automated here uh but with that the phone will ring the time is 
time is 9.47 a.m. The time is 9.47 a.m. The time is 9.47 a.m. So it sounds like if I wanted to optimize that, perhaps I would want to add some periods here. Go ahead and do that. The time is 9.47 a.m. Oh, that was really good. So you could see how this could be interesting. Um, you could run like a cron job that has uh, scripts that could automatically contact you for reminders if you wanted, which yeah, that'd be kind of awesome. But yeah, there's a couple of different things that you could do with this. So that's the basic premise of what I'm doing here. I have an ATA from Cisco that runs over IP with a SIP client on it that I configure to have known user IDs and different things. Then on the computer, I have the program SIPP that is able to connect to it, that is also able to play a WAV file over the connection as part of the test. And then I have to use a TTS program, in this case Festival, and use FFmpeg to convert it to the kind of stupid 8,000 hertz, 8,000 samples per second, 16-bit, oh, I didn't mention it has to be mono too, uh, <laughs> sound example. So that's what all is going into this. But it is kind of fun because you can do uh, weird things. So like if I modify my audio file here really quick uh, to play something different, I can run this again and you'll hear something you may not expect. It's a no -man. <laughs> the best hold music ever. Now you can send any audio through this and a lot of different programs are actually designed to be able to send system audio through it. So if you wanted to stream audio from your PC's normal sound card over to this, that's entirely possible. But that is exactly what I did not want because I've used Linux long enough to know that the audio system is very fragile and you, you want to avoid tampering with it as much as possible. So I'm pretty happy with this setup. Um, I, one thing I didn't show you is that the other phone here can actually call this one too which oh that's just a lot of fun to be able to have the mechanical bell ringer work as well now uh it's possible that some of these will not have enough current to ring a phone like this i'm not sure one of the things you can do is adjust in the regional settings for this ata the ring voltage and that will help you get it to be correct so there's the basic premise. I hope I didn't go over that too quickly and it wasn't too dry because this is all new to me and I'm still loosely coming to grips with it. Uh, but yeah, get an ATA and then learn how to configure your example and then look into the SIP program and I've linked in the description below all of the bash files and my audio.xml configuration file that is able to play a WAV file and then you'll have the examples for how I'm doing the FFmpeg conversion for the audio files. So yeah, FFmpeg can convert pretty much anything into that, which now that I think about it's kind of weird that I was able to convert the Prodigy song, but not the silent wave. I don't know. It's weird. But yeah, that'll get you started. But from here, I'm going to go start a stream, actually, and start working on the software that will integrate this into my Twitch channel. So when someone redeems something, they can send a message that is then automatically converted to TTS and then played over the phone. This is what I'm going to be using. So we're going to be using the Python API for Twitch to develop this actually. And this is just because I'm more familiar with doing stuff through this kind of interface already. And uh, from what I read, this kind of makes sense. I don't know how the IRC method works when it comes to redeems for stuff. So I wanna make sure that I'm using something that I actually will. So I was looking through here, event sub. So this is an example of uh, the kinds of things that you can get. So there, you can do channel follows, you can get channel subscribes, and then uh, somewhere, where was it, up above? So this is the thing, oh, that adds a channel point reward. Well, it's the same thing. Um, I can track for a channel point reward uh, redemption using a uh, the Python interface. I have a lot of experience with Python and these kinds of things, so I'm not too worried about it. I've already generated the OAuth keys and have access to them, so I will just go ahead and open this up, which is not going to show the keys, which you may uh, 
immediately be concerned about. Out of the folder that I'm currently working in, there is a client.json file that contains my uh, client ID and client secret. I've already written a opening program thing here uh, that can access that and provide it as a uh, class in the code. As long as I never do these commands, essentially, print API client ID and API client secret, then it's not a problem. So I can just use this as a reference for the client IP, client ID and secret in here. So that is uh, how I'll be going along with this. Uh, I actually was able to just copy and paste that code basically from my uh, YouTube command line project that I maintain. And I'm hoping there's some good examples here. YouTube, YouTube, actually Google as a whole has some phenomenal uh, API documentation. I just have to say, theirs is really good. Some of it's pretty out of date, but it's still really good. Um, so you can kind of connect the dots when it's needed. So I'm hoping there's something like that here um, that I'll find. All right, I'm gonna grab this. If I run it, boom, bingo. Uh, so you can see I am an affiliate, but yeah, so we're connected. We're, we're using the Twitch API and the client ID and client secret are working. Full implementation of PubSub. PubSub enables you to subscribe to topics for updates. Like when a user cheers. All right. Authenticate. So yeah, that's going to be the next step. Here it is with an auth workflow. So all it does is just pause for a bit. So yep. Uh, now that we have that, uh, we can do this. All right. Um, somebody send me a whisper. I bet it'll show up there. Oh yeah, look at that. That's pretty sweet. That is pretty sweet. We are reading data from Twitch chat right now. How cool is that? Well, it's not really chat. This is just from my account, but yeah, there we go. Anyway, uh, dude, that totally worked. All right, let's go back to PubSub. Channel points, uh, notified when a customer reward is redeemed in the channel. All right, this is a redemption. Oh my gosh, it works. It works. You don't want this as the prompt. Okay, let's see, display name. This is redemption, bingo, right there. Perfect. Boom. All we have to do now is parse that and then send it to the TTS and phone stuff. Um, can you believe this? We're, we're getting really close. Blah. Boom. We're getting the data directly. Don't inject user input directly into your command line. <laughs> I, what could be the problem? Um, yeah, maybe I will write it to a text file and then read that. How about that? Hey, test, please do phone things. Please do phone things. Yes! <laughs> please do phone things. Please do phone things. <laughs> Dude, from Twitch chat, I got a phone call. How cool is that? Wow. Here's the thing. I echo the text into it with a pipe. So that's what I'm doing. So yeah, four giggles. Let's, uh, let's do the thing. Oh yeah, there it is. I made a file and test. Okay, I'm successfully running system commands. Okay, yeah, that's it. So definitely needs escaped. <laughs> All right, now we don't need to do uh, the echo part. Cat, boom. That should be safe now. This is some text sent to a file first. This is some text sent to a file first. There we go. Tech tangent said something. Boom. We're ready. We're ready. Are you guys ready? I'm pretty ready. And go. underscore Nova said according to all known laws of aviation, there is no way a bee should be able to fly. 
Its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground. The bee, of course, flies anyway, because bees don't care what humans think is impossible. <laughs> there you go, the first one. <laughs> oh, man, this is going to be so much fun. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to stream uh, until the next hour here, which would be uh, 36 minutes. So you're gonna have 36 opportunities to make that thing ring between now and the end of stream, all right? So yeah, this should be pretty good. Almost an engineer said, hello, I've been trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty. <laughs> Almost. If he said long time, watch your first time color. I agree with the guy about the bee thing. <laughs> if he said... This will probably be the best idea I ever have for Twitch. Scott, last name 64, said we are no strangers to love. You know the rules, and so do I. Full commitment. What I'm thinking of, you wouldn't get this from any other guy. I just want to tell you how I'm feeling. I got to make you understand. <laughs> Helen underscore cross said, is your refrigerator running? <laughs> Commander Keen underscore said, so I've heard you are not a phone collector. <laughs> Alien Dobbers said. Yeah, it won't Alien do. Dobbers it won't said, do emojis. Ekmaffin <laughs> said, I just called to say I love your stream. Thank you. Newsless1232 said, Hello, Neo, do you know who this is? <laughs> Gemand1243 said, Lauren, it's in Dollar Sit and at Concepture Sad, it's in Alicia. <laughs> said, I am non amirum at Temperin, but on that labor, at Dolor Magnu Aliquium Eret, said, I am Valachua. Oh, that's, that is a good Gem one. <laughs> Metal 88 said, oh, telephone line, give me some time. <laughs> M3GALINUX said, hello, I'd like to order a large pepperoni pizza with extra cheese. <laughs> this is just too much fun. Blackdom underscore Alex said, mom, do not redeem the reward. No. Why did you redeem it? <laughs> D-A-N-3-A underscore H-L-2 said my sprinkler goes like this. That comes back like D-A- <laughs> That was pretty good. Shukandong said hello percent. Have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello percent first name. I thought, um... <laughs> I thought it was, uh, I'd say I'm trying to avoid reading chat when a call comes in. I thought it was, hello, percent, like you were trying to speed run making a phone call. Evil underscore Gardita, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? All right, uh, the next one will be the last one, um, and then we're going to have to uh, end the stream here because we could easily do this all day. Here we go. Star underscore fair said da 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 gub 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 da 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 gub gub gub. There we go. That was the last one. Uh, this was uh, this was really cool. I'm so glad we were able to get this working. I, I look forward to having this as an option uh, from now on. Well, all right, there we have it working. This thing is amazing. I am so looking forward to having people be able to call in on streams now because this is just hilarious um definitely one of my favorite projects for the stream that i've done so far and uh, i look forward to it being not only fun but useful in the future although i will be switching to the bell atlantic uh, mechanical phone here so that will be fun to have in there too but that is it for now um if you want a copy of the code and the configuration files that i'm using there will be links in the description so that you can download them and try and set this up yourself 
But yeah, that is it for now. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, you may want to subscribe. If you want to help support the channel, you can find me on Patreon. But that's it for now, and I'll see you next time.